but he does not. He's picking up a level 11, so he can make two illusions. No glyph either. But, wow, the tower's just going to drop right now. They're not ready to go in just yet. Uh, will they try to swap as the level 8 Ventral Spirit max out Wave of Terror first? But anybody they go on, there's so many BKBs. It's got to be one of these support heroes. There's Queen of Pain ulti catches for Blink, as well as a Scream. Counter initiate Fissure. Link's trying to throw anything, but he just dies before he's able to do it. And Zhao Wade, as well as the other LGD players, are going to back out. Nobody else from Invasion MUFC has died. But Hontrash player goes in, takes a big nuke, throws a stun, and dies. He doesn't even get his ulti off. How did he get in there? I don't even know what's going on. How is he so deep? I think they thought because the BKBs were down and the heroes were low, they could go back in. Especially Yao. Look at him. But able to just turn that back around, and that's definitely going to be Rax. And on top of that, they lost two, or uh, they lost a key hero and a BKB charge. Well, these guys aren't greedy at all. They took the melee barracks and they were out. Chaos Knight's still dead. They don't care. They just want to take that and go back to farming. They're actually picking the top lane, so a tier 2 tower is going to be their next goal. But really, really nice play from LGD. They're able to take off two heroes in a mid push. And then take a Rax after a pretty solid fight. And some slight mistakes from MUFC. So at the moment, LGD playing a lot better than them. Yeah, and the scariest thing about this is that DD is only about 300 gold away from his Blink Dagger now. Wow. That's, uh, that's when things get pretty serious. You can yeah. start solo killing at that point. I, I am still curious to see him not picking up the, uh, the Enchant Totem, though. Because he could get a pretty good AoE stun in melee, but... I guess that there's a lot of scary heroes in MUFC, most of which are ranged, so maybe that's why he's adjusting. I think what DD's trying to do is just Fissure, and if he sees an opportunity after that to walk Dyer's in, he'll ult. So I think he realizes that the Aftershock damage is going to be a lot more useful with his ultimate. The chances of him getting an, ac an Enchant Totem off are actually quite slim. Yeah. For him to walk into a team like that, it means certain death. He's just doing a really good job not dying in any of these fights. He's 1-1-9, one, one, and nine. he sits back, shoots the Fissure, and then just uh, waits for the cooldown again. And that's pretty much the main goal of an Earthshaker. You don't even necessarily set up a lot of kills, but just being able to throw your Fissure and then make plays are, are great. And that's a Shadow Blade on Nature's Prophet. He will stay invisible. And then the immediate gem purchased by DDC. They're like, okay, guys, we should have had that kill, but we didn't. Regardless, we're still going to get a Tier 2 tower, but um, not always the best thing. This could go late game, by the way. Nature's Prophet, one of the most annoying turtle heroes in the game. He's maxing out Sprout pretty early, and now that he has a Shadow Blade, Swift Pushing is definitely something that they're capable of. Yeah, it looks like they're going to continue to go top. They realize that Queen of Pain is still bottom. He's going to have to go get mana. They do have Glyph this time, though. But positionally, this is a little weak. TFG doing the smart thing here, just cutting the creeps and making it so that LGD kind of has to commit with this wave. Well, they're doing some spirit damage here, so go in actually on DDC. He's got the BKB finished, and that's a really dead visage. There's the ulti immediately afterwards. Looking for another reality rift, but the BKBs are almost off cooldown. Zhao Wei running for his life. Salar's going to try to pick up some kills. DDC actually gets picked up. Great ulti from Queen of Pain. BKB already used, but the Rocket Barrage doing some damage. Chaos like great shackle shot on him. He's going to go down. No buybacks just yet. Shadow Blade now from TFG. And Ling, will you survive? Queen of Pain's trying to pressure him. Almost goes down 66 HP. There's the blink back in. Dagger, four step out. Yao wants to run, but this is a little scary. Salar's still here. And the Rocket Barrage is doing full damage to Winter. Another great shackle shot. Winter running for his life. Stun on Salar. Oh my gosh, he's going to be able to blink out just in time. Great play so far from MUFC. Trying to make kills and barely keeping each other alive. And they're able to recover the gem. Great, great pickup for Nature's Prophet here. Yeah, what a good team fight. I mean, they realize that they can't go in on either of the BKB heroes. So they try to pick up the hero that's been doing the most damage to them, the Visage. And they're able to get him off before he can do anything. Yeah. And on top of that, uh, DD was isolated by the Nature's Prophet, not being able to do anything. He wasn't even able to get his Blink ult off. So just a perfect fight by MUFC. Yeah, that's really important. Uh, aiming for those initiating heroes is such a big deal. If you guys don't really know how that works, uh, Blink Dagger, if you take physical, or if you take any damage from a player base source, that's not exactly true, it's not any, but if you take, um, I believe, lethal damage from a player source, it prevents you from blinking. So if Nature's Prophet just goes into the battle, and he sprouts him, and he right-clicks him every three seconds, it stops the Earthshaker from really making a massive impact, and that was huge, especially because LGD pretty much initially had to retreat all based off of slight out-of-position play from DDC. So if he was in better position, we could see the game have just ended right there. But luckily for MUFC, they had some nice plays to react to this, and they can delay the game now. Silar does finish his, but uh, his butterfly. I almost said battle battlefly. Battlefly like sounds like a cleaving evasion item. It how great would that item be? I, it's pretty probably good. And region. Why can't we just combine all items? I don't know. Should be like the ultimate... PA what? No, not PA. God, don't stack evasion, guys. Never do that. 
Ogre Club finished on uh, DDC, just getting a little bit more tanky, but man, he went down so quickly in that last fight. It really was impressive. Uh, are you talking about DDC? Yeah, he just kind of yeah. died. Really He's got quickly. four levels of Gravekeeper's Cloak, didn't matter. Jumped on absolutely dead really fast. Um, maybe it's the Spirits or something. I mean, it's, it's 28 armor. Yeah, but if you take five sources of damage and or five Spirits, uh, then he only has, what, like 10 armor tops He's with the uh, really medallion? He's got with his positioning now. Yeah, he really does. Before he was a little too cocky, playing a little too up, thinking that with his 28 armor and... 1400 HP was enough to survive, but Chaos yeah. Knight took him right down. Yeah, it really did. I don't know if the mech was used or not uh, to save him, but... Uh, Windrunner has a pretty good item progression. Ultimate Orb passed the mech four staff, so we will see a sheep eventually on Yao. Which is going to mean some pretty scary things for MUFC. Uh, BKB on Chaos Knight still in 9 seconds, so he can definitely do a good job here, I'm sure. Uh, all the ultimates are up as well, and uh, FZYY also has an ultimate orb, looking pretty similar to the Windrunner at the moment. Lots of buybacks, too, on the way of MUFC. 2,700 gold on Queen of Pain. Oh, they're going in. Actually, BKB's being popped. They're going to be able to go in on top of Zhao Wei. He pops his BKB. There's the Manta split, or I'm sorry, the ulti split as well. Salar being chased. And drums as well, but that's actually going to be the end of the team fight. I guess all the BKBs not used. TFG in trouble. Fincher's going to land. Couple more right clicks. Grave chill, and he gets picked off. The sentry ward on the low ground was enough to spot the nature's prophet. Is that the only? He does have buyback, so he could purchase back right now if he wants to. The BKBs are on cooldown, so I think they could maybe go. There's the swap. One stun on Jawe. The shackle's going to latch. Winter as well. The lane. Great blink. Double stun. Gemma True set on the ground, and Earthshaker gets picked off. So they're getting some kills at least. Queen of Pain actually going really aggressive here. Easy kill there. That was crazy. DDC eats a stun and Winter running for his life. Is going to die though. Four seconds stun on Siler. And I, I, can Han Trash player do it? There's the dagger. Siler. Oh, the shackle shot. And that's going to swing things. Han Trash player goes down. Queen of Pain goes down. And the top Rax is going to die. Six shackles from Yao right at the end. They might have been able to kill Siler there. Despite him having a butterfly. But after the shackle landed, it was all over. He just dodged, like, six hits as well. Did he? Yeah, it was actually kind of insane. Man. I don't know. That Queen of Pain, I think that was a little too aggressive. She had two, two 300 HP, dives in, tries to get screams off. But I think the main reason she did that was because she realized the team fight was essentially lost. Yeah. Wanted to put out as much damage, get as much spells on her as possible, and then just buy back and go, go yeah, at it again. That, so I that's don't think, my guess as yeah, well. I don't think it was one of those, like, wow, that was a terrible play. I just think it was her thinking, well, I need to salvage this fight somehow. And she did run out of mana. Again, her item build is mostly focused on the BKB. The ultimate orb is some slightly more stats, like 130 mana. So being able to buy back instead of jumping in or running back to base and then having to wait 15 seconds, she could jump in, do let one last scream, get a full mana pool, and try to do more. And she almost did. Like, again, they almost killed the gyro. Maybe they could have held after that point, but... I mean, it's going to be so hard to come back now. When you buy back on two core heroes on the Nature's Prophet as well as the Queen of Pain, any item progression past this point is going to be tough. Yeah, they had to do it, though. I agree with their decision to suicide there and go for the yeah. for the buyback. Because what are you going to do with two racks down against a team like this? Um, Nature's Prophet tactics. <laughs> uh, that's You can spam ulti, I guess, and then maybe split push, but they're always going to have a gem, and they've got pretty good ganking. I don't know. It's going to be tough. Visage finishes his Aghanim Scepter. That's going to be three birds now up. This is pretty sick, guys. Uh, gives you a lot more damage output, especially if he, can hit, if he can hit 16. It's awesome. But um, at the moment, three medium birds and some good damage output, especially against supports. Alfred Hitchcock is really happy right now, but I think the issue with yeah. MUFC's lineup is that they just haven't been able to utilize the potential of the mobility. Yeah. The Wisp TP, I think, has happened a total of once this game. Yeah, that's accurate. Yeah, from what I've seen. I mean, it could be twice, but I think it's once. Once uh, offensively. I least. remember he died once in the mid lane from teleporting somewhere, which I think was a oh, save. Yeah, I'm once guessing. offensively. I missed that, that I one. I think he was trying to save, but essentially he's only used it once offensively, not being able to create too much space. Here comes the stun. Wow, the blink out just in time from Queen of Pain. That was a Shadow Blade on these two core heroes. A Shadow Blade picked up on both Dragonite as well as Gyrocopter. This is really cool and very smart. The reason they bought these in a late game scenario is because they knew they're ready to push. They know they have the stronger team. If they can initiate in any kind of advantage, they'll win the fight. What they're looking to do is just kill anybody. If they kill anybody, it's a 5v4, and there's no way that MUFC can win the fight. Unless it's like some super sick LGD throws. So very cool to get it in the late game like this so that they can try to pick off anybody. And on top of that, it forces the supports on 
MEFC to just Ooh. be so poor. Laying out of position, the bats come in, the right click as well, and he's almost dead. Yes, he does get picked off. Jarocop with the last hit. Flat cannon, call down, great Fissure. Does he even need to Echo Slam? I don't even think he cares. The Queen of Pain pops BKB, but almost dies to physical damage, and good game is called. That's the end of game one. Really, really one-sided game. Is that fair to say? I mean, their laning strat was pretty good from MUFC. I think MUFC made pretty good decisions in the laning setup. The Queen of Pain had a little bit of a rough time on the top lane. Mid lane was good for Chaos Knight Wisp, and then their bot lane, I felt like Yao just outlaned the Nature's Prophet pretty heavily, and that put them at a pretty big disadvantage, and they weren't able to get their global stat strat running when all the ganks kept happening. Yeah. When you pick a lineup like this, and you have a specific game plan, and you just can't execute it out, then it's going to be almost an automatic loss. I mean, they went kind of all in on this, we'll try to uh, be as mobile as possible, we'll try to Wisp TP as much as possible as well, Yeah. but they just weren't able to get anything going with it. Hmm. It must be really hard to play. Well, that was it for game one. Let's hear what everybody has to say on the anal analytics panel. Uh, welcome back to the desk. I don't have a mic because I'm actually plugging it in. <laughs> there we go. Now I do. Uh, well, it was a fantastic game for LGD China, not so much for MUFC. And I think like Blitz as well as Lumi uh, or Purge said, you go CK Wisp, you go Profit. You really have to have a decent start and be able to find pickoff. And for D LGD, they just picked this fantastic five-man lineup, Lumi, and they had the early advantage. They find those kills, and what a profit CK Wisp actually do against that amount of AOE, that amount of five-man. The CK illusions just melted in the team fights. It felt like once they lost the laning stage, there's just not a whole lot they could do. Yeah, I think the laning stage was actually the biggest thing. Um, CK was level nine for like majority of the game till 15, 16 minutes. And without Phantasm at level 2, you're not going to do a single thing against a BKB Dragonite, a BKB Gyrocopter. Right. And when he got his Phantasm at level 2, that's when the AoE melt them down. Yeah, that's, so. when, that's when the Gyro had some big damage items. Sure. The, the DK had his level 2 ultimate and too much AoE. Right. So if the laning stage went a little bit better and he was able to get his level 11 a lot sooner, then I think the team fight gets a lot easier for, uh, for MUFC. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen and the snowball just... Was too big. I mean, they had the all right start. You know, the CK Wisp, they, they get that first blood mid on the Dragonite with yeah, the yeah. three seconds stun, but. I thought the laning was actually very smart because if you know they're going to be offensive trialing you, Wisp is a fair, fairly weak hero in their in early most game. cases, yeah. Right, but if you do solo mid, especially with the lucky illusion rune that Winter got at uh, right. minimum one, you were able to win the laning stage very hard. Unfortunately, they weren't able to make too much out of that advantageous mid lane. You know, going profit, I, I think there's nothing wrong with the CK Wisp. There's nothing wrong with getting a profit on top of it. But when you do go for those three, it really weakens your ability to take 5v5 clashes. If you have something like a Clockwork, a Magnus, maybe not a Magnus because he's not the best offlaner, but some, even a Darkseer, or some hero that can really allow you to take the clashes sure. more directly, then it frees up your options a little bit more in the mid game. When you go profit and CK Wisp, you just have to have that good start. Yeah, and I think uh, throughout 15, 20 minutes, um, MBSC wasn't able to take a tier 1 tower with Profit. And right. CK, CK is not exactly a great tower pusher just by nature, but if you kill everybody, nobody's defending those towers. And that didn't happen either. So so going into this match, at least my analysis was, I think MBSC need to outdraft LGD, mm -hmm. and they need to outstrategize them. I don't know if it has to be on the level of Alliance's level 1 5-man TP row strat, but... It's got to be something that gives them an early strategic advantage. Because I do feel like LGD China just has the flat out better movement, better team decision making, and individual skill as I, well. If I have to rate the draft, I thought uh, MUFC had the better draft. They got CK Wisp. Their laning was very smart as well. They put the Queen of Pain as well as the defensive venge up top against the offensive tri lane. I thought that was great laning. So they just got outplayed then? I think they got outplayed. I mean, if you look at Winrunner on the, on the long lane, um, minute two, minute three, Winrunner was LCSing Profit like two to one, three to one. That's, that's tough. Yeah. Well, what are they going to do going into game two? Of course, it's a best out of two format. Uh, if, if MUFC can win this game, they'll get one point. Otherwise, they won't get any, and LGD will be sitting pretty. So any, any they, they had what you thought was the better draft. Certainly, yeah. they had the pocket strat with the CK Wisp. What do they turn to now? I mean, I think keep up with the drafting. I think keep up with the smart lightning. They just have to play better. Play, play a little bit better, and which is a little bit hard for game to game transitions. There you, there you guys yeah. have it. There's our expert analysis. MUFC needs to play better. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Lessons available if they need yeah. it. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for game one. When we come back, we'll be live with game two of LGD China versus MUFC. Stay tuned.
We are back, guys, for the Alienware Cup Season 1 Group A match between LGD and MUFC. Game 1, I wouldn't characterize it as a stomp, but something just shy of that, Kevin. Yeah, it was pretty close. Um, MUFC did have some okay CS in the early game, but largely it was LGD taking the advantage. And they definitely transitioned that into the mid game. Stomped, lost few towers, killed Dominant people. Dominant win. Dead heroes all over the place for the Dire team, so that's how it went. We're into the game two, though, if you guys want to watch the drafting stage with us. We're actually in the first round bands. Keep in mind, MUFC arguably got out drafted in the last game, and LG has a whole extra 90 seconds this time to decide what heroes they want to pick because they were not late. So uh, do they have a chance? 90 seconds, man. That they, makes a lot of difference. They better have a chance because I really... I'd like to delay cutting my hair as long as possible. This is really close to a 2-0 LGD and not a 1-1 MUFC, so I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, feasibly you could see me without any hair tomorrow, guys. And then, I mean, that would mean that everyone uh, at uh, BTS has lost some form of hair. Is that is that a, is that that's a like fact? A recurring, that's like a recurring trend. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> not all of us by choice. Oh, uh, okay. Any, we're, we're not going to get paid anymore. Okay, going into this game. MUFC picking up the Chen, LD giving us dirty looks, Darkseer as well, so not able to get a jungler last time, but this time picking up the Chen quite early actually. That's the fastest yeah. Chen pickup I've seen in quite some time since I've seen Alliance pick. Yeah, and I kind of like the fast Chen, maybe not the fact that it's fast, but the fact that it's in the game at all. Chen is a hero that was dominant at different parts of Dota just because of how strong jungling is. You can take fast towers. The send back is really good. That's the, oh gosh, what is it called? Test of Faith? Yep, Test of Faith. Um, Test of Faith send back is really effective as always. Um, the downside is that y it's not as good early game because it's not tied to Holy Persuasion and it costs you more mana early. So um, I, I would almost say, or well, Enchantress is definitely stronger early game um, in terms of offensive potential. You can do a lot more micro, you can grab multiple creeps. But Chen does have better team fight implications once he hits like six, seven. So the heal as well. Yeah, his his ulti is is pretty cool. Um, especially uh, one thing I really like seeing teams do is when they let somebody else build the mech, like the Darkseer, for ex this, for example, this game. Let Darkseer build the mech. Let Chen just go arcane agonims. If he can get the agonims by like 25 minutes or something, it's really good because then he's gonna have like a 30 second cooldown on his global ulti heal. It is so powerful. Um, you can use that while you're pushing and things like that. I would love to see a little bit of a strat like that. Yes, and actually LGD going to ban out that Spectre, which is kind of interesting because it's not a hero you see banned out too early. I'm not too certain actually if MEFC is one of the heroes they favor or not, but I like the combination of a hero like Spectre and Chen where you secure the early LGD game and no matter what, even if you have a hero like Chen that's late or uh, kind of poor late game, you have a hero like Spectre which is just the best late game here you can get. Yeah, um, exactly. You can take early towers, which gives your Spectre gold. Um, you can gank for his lane in case he's against a tri lane of some sorts, um, and just keep him alive if possible in team fights. Actually, w what you can do is just really cool. Um, as Spectre is possibly dying, if he hasn't used his ulti yet, send him back, and as he hits full HP, he can ulti and then join the battle again. That's always yeah. really cool to see. Really good synergy. Nice pointing yeah. that out, Kevin. I'm the man. Thank you. We're actually pointing at each other. For some reason, when we uh, when we talk and you guys can't see, we point and look at each other all the time, like we're doing it right now. Uh, oh, I can't that help was it awkward because I have uh, I've got to stare into his eyes. But that anyways. is the magic of in-person <laughs> casting, guys. <laughs> it's uh, it's why we built the studio, or why other people built the studio, and I'm taking advantage of it right now. Me so. too. It just gives me an opportunity to look purge in the eyes. <laughs> so LGD gonna pick up Chaos Knight for themselves. I mean, I really like this pick. Why? It means that Invasion, what are they going to do? Are they going to take a Wisp right now with the lineup they have? They'll have zero stunts. To counter their it? Yeah, Is their it? team fight and burst will be so poor. How do they do this at this point? Well, they do have a mini Ravage with Darkseer if they vacuum the whole enemy team, so there's that at least. Vacuum but in no spirits, but it means that LGD should be able to secure the um, the Wisp as well. What, don't you? Oh, it's, it's, it's two picks now, correct? Like, yeah. Um, MUFC takes one pick here, and then it goes back to LGD, which gives them a pretty good chance of getting a Wisp, which means you're expecting to see, what do you think, Chaos Knight Wisp mid? Or do you think it'll be an aggressive trial lane? Like, they'll probably put Gyro versus Darkseer. That's a pretty good matchup for Gyrocopter. And Darkseer surely will be off lane for MUFC. So that means that they can do an aggressive trial lane with Chaos Knight, and then maybe put Clock mid or something. I guess they have options. Um, they don't have to pick the Wisp, but it, it does work out really, really nicely. 
Yeah, it's one of the main reasons why Chaos Knight has become such um, such a popular pick. Just uh -huh. because it's it's that classic pairing, man. It's like you and me. Who's the wisp in the relationship? It's definitely me. I give yep. up. Yep. Anyways, I knew that was Rubik going to be picked up by MUFC. I mean, you can't really taste the... Look at, look at how smart that is. Because what do you do as a team like MUFC? You can't take the wisp. It just it limits you so hard. It's such an intelligent pickup by LGD. They don't take the uh, they don't take the wisp first or the IO, I guess, because that means invasion or MUFC can maybe fit the chaos knight in yep. with their lineup. Queen they can kind of make of that work. Pain. But taking a wisp, LGD's especially with the Chen already, you have no reliable stun for your tri lane. It's such a smart pickup. It's kind of one of those we force you take the wisp, sure, but then what do you do with it? Whereas, if they get the Wisp, great. Hmm. I don't know why I keep referring to it as a Wisp. I'm sorry. I know there is somebody it's fine. No, that's going to be super I'm, angry I'm about never, it. I don't know if I'm ever going to stop calling him Wisp. Io is more difficult to say. Yeah. Um, Queen of Pain, the fourth pick for MUFC here. So we'll see that mid most likely. We saw Queen of Pain in the last game. He did okay, Ten but he was forced to get a pretty fast KB. Do you think that's going to happen again? I mean, Chaos Knight Wisp has a scary now. initiation with... Uh, uh, Reality Rift as well as the Wisp Tether, and that could be a Queen of Pain burst it down pretty easily, actually. Um, I feel like it's really, really scary for them. Uh, the, the plus side is, again, Chen. If you look at what LG is working with for initiation, it's mainly Clockwork and the Wisp Chaos Knight combo. Whoever gets jumped on could just immediately be sent back, especially if it's like Rubik or somebody like that. That hero is going to die guaranteed uh, if he gets initiated on by one of those guys. So uh, the send back could be really, really crucial here this game. Yes, most definitely. Completely agree with that. But at the same time, I mean, MUFC doesn't really have the tankiest heroes. Chen goes down quite quickly. Rubik goes down really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Queen of Pain, even with the blink, especially if she offensively blinks, she'll just blow up. Feastless void. Pretty typical for that hero. Oh, and a void going to be picked up. Huh. So purple hero synergy, of course. Uh, does has nothing to do with their skills because they're purple that they're good. But Vacuum and Chronosphere are really awesome. Um, you can set those kills up. Surge in the Darkseer. Void will probably get a couple levels of Time Walk in the early game so that he has a longer initiation range, and then he can just drop the Chrono right on top of Vacuum and probably get at least three. This not only helps for catching more heroes, but if he grabs a Battle Fury, the Cleave is actually a pretty good component of the damage. Even though it's only 35%, it can add up. So, yep. And Void actually has that luck factor that I love to see in games. Just kind of flip the coin repeatedly, see if you can get any backtracks off. Or stuns. Oh, have you seen this Rubik set before? Yeah, that looks actually really sick. I have never it looks like he's battle. constantly twitching. Is that just me? He was always doing that. Uh, oh, really? I never yeah, yeah. really Pretty noticed typical. that. Oh, Void has already farmed a Battle Fury. Nice, Pretty nice. sick. Uh,